my my name is Molara Wood. I'm a writer, arts journalist, and culture activist, and I've written about the arts for anything up to 20 years now. I consider myself a lifelong student of the Yoruba. I first visited the Grove, Ocean Grove, in 2003. I was actually living in London and I'd come on holiday in Nigeria with my two small children, <laughs> both born in England. And we went to the Ocean Grove and spent a whole day there. And uh, I was encouraged to actually go uh, by my late dad. So this was an enterprise that involved uh, three generations of my family, if you can imagine. The Grove is, is spellbinding. The sculptures, everything. Everything just looks so organic, like something birthed by nature itself. And human beings, Susan Venga and the new sacred artists, have just been used as vessels to bring this about. The sculptures are figures from the Yoruba pantheon. The Yoruba have uh, anything up to 401 deities. Some are prominent and some are not so well known. Some are specific to certain regions, but there, there are deities that are overarching whichever part of Yoruba land you go to or that you're talking about. Oshun is one of the overarching uh, uh, deities in the Yoruba pantheon. And so what we have in the grove is Suzanne Venga and members of the new sacred art movement. This is their representation of Yamoko, who is uh, um, like a mother to all the Yoruba gods. And uh, Yamoko was the first woman in Yoruba mythology to, to make black soap. She's the patron deity of women who make palm oil. Um, the patron deity, really, of women's um, arts and crafts. Okay? So in, in all of that, you're seeing creativity, femininity, fecundity, in, in, in all of this. And also, Adire, which is very, very Ushugo. Adire, tie and die. From the appearance of the sculpture, she's a giant and she was someone who um, watched over the grove, watched over Oshogo, who see into the past, who see into the, the future, and um, has, um, it, it is depicted with three pairs of hands. One is for advice, one is for um, blessing, and one for admonition. Locals would say it's for regret, but I like to think it's for admonition when somebody is going wrong. And um, she has uh, two helpers. They're also depicted, the birds, um, on either side, Atiala and Atioro. And these, are, these birds, the names of these birds, are also part of Yoruba folklore. So when you grow up and you're, you understand the language, you hear of Atiala and Atioro a lot. So it's not just um, representation. There are, there are depths of meanings in, in the culture and in the language. You have these um, uh, sculptural uh, formations that stretch long away on the ground, away from the uh, tall figure. For me, I think it's um, um, representative of the all-encompassing uh, kind of figure. Um, that and that, that has tentacles all over in the spiritual realm, uh, in the in the material realm, but also uh, all corners of the earth. So when people talk about cultural revolution in Europe and all of that, in Oshobo we had a cultural revolution, and 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 that's part of the fruit of it is part of what you're seeing in the Ocean Grove today. It's a, a place of a living tradition, a place of a living culture, a living um, experience and practice of belief systems. Everything in harmony with nature and in, in, in harmony with art. So beauty, contemplation, meditation, 
a beautiful sanctuary. And that's what I would want the world to, to see.